let me tell you, our project is, uh, I'm talking to you today is about biodiesel education, but I want, our project really has two thrusts. It has a research component and it has an education component. Uh, just uh, highlight a few of the things we found uh, out in the research aspects of it. We've run uh, various blends of uh, biodiesel uh, from various feedstocks uh, through all sorts of engines, comparing it with number two uh, petroleum diesel. And what we found in uh, agricultural uh, tractors, what we found in irrigation lift pumps, what we found in uh, ATV type utility vehicles, and even single cylinder diesel engines is that when we run anything up to a B20 blend, there's absolutely no difference in any variable that we study between petroleum diesel and 20% biodiesel blend. That goes for power output, goes for torque output, goes for fuel efficiency, thermal efficiency, and oxides of nitrogen emissions, okay? So I think that's an important uh, thing to point out today. Again, that's not what I'm here to talk about today, but I did want you to know that. Again, we'll visit about the education project today, and I do invite you to stick around at the end, and if you'd like to uh, view the demonstration and, and visit with us about the uh, biodiesel demonstration engine that you may have seen as you came in this morning. Okay. A little bit of background on the education part of our work. First of all, uh, Skipper found in about 2007 that about a third of Americans had never even heard of biodiesel. They were completely unaware that such a product of bi as biodiesel existed. Only about 4.2% of Americans regularly purchase any type of biodiesel blend. Uh, Caldwell, an industry leader, said if we want to move green behaviors beyond a relatively small number of early adopters, we've got to move into marketing and education. They're the key. We've got to tell people what are the benefits of biodiesel and biofuels. Well, Mr. Stovall this morning indicated the benefits of biodiesel. It's renewable, it's domestically produced, it's clean burning, and it stimulates rural and agricultural economies. So we have a positive message to tell with biodiesel. A little bit uh, more about public attitudes toward biodiesel. 79% uh, or 70% of the people agreed that biofuels are still in the experimental stages of development. Biofuels can only be used in modified engines. Over the half the people believe that biofuels can only be used in specially modified engines. People are undecided whether biofuels lead to increased or decreased maintenance costs, whether biofuels are high performance fuels, whether biofuels meet quality standards, or whether use of biofuels in engines leads to engine damage. Okay? So there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of questions among the public about biodiesel and how it performs in engines. We well, might ask, why is that important? Well, if you leave out the universe of 16-year-old sons, which I have one of, if you leave out the universe of 16-year-old sons, most people make decisions based on reason, okay? <laughs> now, based on reason. And when you break that down, they really do a couple of things. If I do this, what will be the consequences for me? If I do this, what will my friends, relatives, neighbors think about it? And are there things out here that promote me doing this or hinder me from doing this? If you think about that in terms of biodiesel use, then a person might say, does biodiesel have negative consequences if I use it in my engine? Okay. Do my friends and neighbors accept the use of biodiesel? And then is biodiesel available locally? Can I get it? Okay. If the answers to all of those things are positive, then people develop positive behavioral intentions, and that typically leads to the use of biodiesel. But notice these consequences here. What will using biodiesel do for me or do to me? If you go back to the previous slide, there's a lot of misinformation, and there's a lot of people that are undecided. They don't know what biodiesel will do when they use it in their engine. So that's the, really the focus of our educational program to present this information to folks in a uh, hands-on manner. Uh, tell you a little bit about some of our educational efforts so far that uh, we've done, and we've been into 14 plus schools. Now this is since we've been collecting data. We've, before we started collecting data, as we developed our, uh, our lessons and so forth, our demonstration, we were in several other schools. But since we've been collecting data, we've been in 14 schools, 14 plus. 
Uh, those schools stretch across the state from Fayetteville to Wiener, which is scheduled uh, for first right after, uh, right after uh, the semester break. We've been in 22 individual classes, classrooms, agriculture and science classrooms. Uh, we've collected data or visited in these 14 schools with approximately 380 students. We've collected complete sets of data from about 300, well not about, exactly 312 students. Uh, and this is what I'll be reporting on today, our results of the educational program with this, groups of folk, this group of folks. We've also uh, presented to community colleges, we've presented to university students, and these are approximate numbers. Uh, we've been to numerous field days, county fairs, meetings, public events, and we even participate in a, in a parade in DeWitt, Arkansas with the biodiesel demonstration engine. Our in-school program, what we do, it's a two-day program, so it lasts an hour one day and then it lasts an hour the next day in schools. On the first day, we give them a little pretest to see what they know about biodiesel, other uh, attitudes toward biodiesel. Then we follow that with a lecture discussion that talks about biodiesel production, feedstocks, performance, those types of things. Uh, then we'll come in a second day, and that is not always the following day, depending on school schedules and so forth. It can be two or three days later. But we come in on day two uh, with our engine, and we demonstrate biodiesel performance in the engine. Uh, we switch it back and forth between diesel and biodiesel. They take power, torque, fuel consumption measurements, those types of things. Uh, then we go in and we put that data into an Excel spreadsheet template, and we plot performance and fuel consumption and discuss with the students how biodiesel and diesel compare to each other when you actually run it in an engine. Uh, again, we've got data today on 14 schools, 22 classes, and 312 students. A little bit more, we have a, a pretty standard presentation there. What is biodiesel? What can you use to make biodiesel? You can see some of the questions we visited with the students about in the class. Then we take them out on the second day and we have a little three-cylinder Kubota engine comes out of an RTV 900 utility vehicle uh, mounted on a trailer, one tank with biodiesel, one tank with number two petroleum diesel, and we let students with data sheets collect information, collect data on, again, performance, uh, fuel efficiency of the engine when it operates at various loads on each of those two types of fuel. Okay? Then we go back in, like I said, and we plot it and we discuss it. So that's pretty much the, uh, the two-day program that we uh, put these students through. Uh, I won't say a lot about this, except we do pretest and we get some information about what they know about biodiesel, what they think about biodiesel, and then we try to describe the students as best we can. After the second day, we come in and we retest them on the knowledge. Uh, the same original items on the pretest, except we rearrange them in order and we rearrange the answers so they can't just say, well, I said A last time for this one, so I'm going to say A again this time for this one. Uh, we look at their perceptions of biodiesel, and then we ask them what they thought about the instructional methods, the lecture, and the engine demonstration. So that's pretty much the educational program in the schools. Uh, what have we found in doing all this? Okay. Uh, to describe our students, they're mostly male in the classes we've been in so far. They mostly don't come from farms, and they're mostly either in the 10th, 11th, or 12th grade. So we're targeting high school students uh, with this program. Uh, here is the mean score on the knowledge pretest. This is on the post test. This is so the first day when we come in. We ask them what they know about biodiesel. They have a set of questions they answer, multiple choice. Now, I always like multiple choice because if you've got four things to choose from, what's your, what's your score going to be if you don't know anything? 25%, right? Look here. Their actual score is 29.48. It's not significantly different from just random guessing. So our conclusion is the students don't really know anything about biodiesel when we come in before we do the educational program. Uh, at the end of the educational program, they're up to about a 65%, which we'd like to boost that higher, and we're looking at the educational program to look at ways to do that, uh, and we've got some ideas on that, but we've more than doubled their knowledge of biodiesel, even if you assume that they really did know 29%, which again, most of that's just a guess, but their knowledge of biodiesel does increase significantly as a result of this program. Uh, again, uh, it's about... Uh, 2.9 pooled standard deviation increase, highly significant, not by chance, and this knowledge score is much, very significantly different from zero. So they have learned about biodiesel. Uh, student perceptions of biodiesel, 
This is an area we're really looking at when we come in on the pretest. Students don't know much about biodiesel, but they do have a fairly positive perception of biodiesel. This is on a one to five scale, five being the best, one being the lowest. They have a highly positive uh, outlook or attitude toward biodiesel. Uh, we don't uh, damage that any, uh, and we do increase it a little bit. It's not significantly different. Now, our program is really designed to be an educational program as opposed to a rah-rah program on biodiesel is great. We hope they get that impression, but what we really want to show them is unbiased information about how biodiesel performs, okay? So, uh, again, we're not really, I mean, indirectly we'd like to influence attitude toward biodiesel, but we want to do that by them learning more about biodiesel. So, again, they're pretty uh, positive toward it to begin with. They're pretty positive toward it at the end of the program also. We do really want to know uh, what part of the program they like and what part they don't like. And as you might well imagine, uh, if you were in school, you'd rather go out and watch the engine run and collect data and, and hear the noise and, and, and see it operate than you would to hear a lecture about it in class. Well, that's the way the students are, no surprise there. But do notice that they enjoy the lecture on a one to five scale pretty high. They enjoy the demonstration a little bit more. But when you put it head to head, which do you like the most? They by far prefer the demonstration to the lecture. They also believe they learn more by actually seeing the engine operate on diesel versus biodiesel as opposed to the lecture. Uh, and again, they're, overall they're real positive toward both aspects of the program. Uh, here are some student comments uh, that have been written on some of our, uh, our data collection devices, our, our tests. Uh, I'll give you just a second to read through those. Is this the actual language of 16 <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. I, and I'll answer that. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll elaborate on that. Uh, this, this, this might be more like I liked it a whole bunch or I liked it. This is really a kind of composite of responses, but this is the real gist of, of what they have said. Uh, I took out the ain'ts and those kind of things. Right. This is the one I really like, though, and I hope a lot of our students, our 300 and some students that we've uh, impacted over this past year are doing this, going home and telling their folks and their friends and their relatives what they did in school, what they learned about biodiesel, and promoting biodiesel in that fashion. If that's true, then we're having a lot more impact than the folks we actually see one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, a few conclusions on here, and they're pretty straightforward. Uh, students don't know much about biodiesel to begin with, okay? Students do, though, have a fairly positive perception. You know, biodiesel's been in the news. They're aware of it. You know, they're favorably disposed toward biodiesel. They just don't know much about it. Uh, our educational program is successful in increasing student knowledge of biodiesel. They know a heck of a lot more about biodiesel after the second day than they did at the beginning of the first day. It uh, doesn't have much effect on their perceptions of biodiesel, though, and we're looking at the program to see where we might tweak it uh, and have a bigger impact there uh, and still uh, provide an educational program. Uh, students like both the classroom and lecture we've developed, the discussion and lecture. They like the demonstration, but way far more they like the demonstration and actually believe they learn more from the demonstration than from the lecture. Uh, recommendations, we'd like to continue offering the educational program because obviously it's making a difference to the people who participate in it. Uh, we have some ideas for enhancing the program. Uh, a couple of the questions deal with exhaust emissions, effects of biodiesel use on exhaust emissions. Uh, and due to time, we don't demonstrate that as part of the demonstration. We talk about it in the lecture part but we don't demonstrate that. We don't actually measure emissions for them. So we're looking at incorporating that into the demonstration to see if that'll boost those scores on what are the effects of biodiesel use on exhaust emissions and on the environment. Uh, and then we, again, like I said earlier, we'd like to examine uh, their, uh, what we can do to, uh, again, stay true to the facts and the educational mission, but to increase uh, those already positive attitudes, make them a little bit more positive if we can. We really do think that if you're going to interact with uh, students, at, uh, especially at the high school level, then you have to have hands-on things. You have to have things for them to participate in, things for them to see, things to observe. And that's borne out by the fact that they like that better and they think it's more effective. So you've got to have that component to the project. So we're looking at developing other activities 
uh, that they can do hands-on. And then finally, uh, Jason will be outside as you leave today, uh, and I'll be out there, and we'd be just tickled to death to uh, demonstrate the engine for you, uh, visit with you about it, uh, you know, talk about biodiesel, anything you'd like to visit about. Please uh, encourage you to stop by on your way out and, and take advantage of that. And lastly, I'd like to thank uh, Arkansas Soybean Promotion Board. Uh, you've obviously made this whole project possible, uh, and we certainly do appreciate your support, and it's been great working with you. So thank you very much, and if there are questions, I'd be happy to answer them. On cold weather performance, uh, it depends on your feedstock, first of all. Uh, what we found, in a bit, and Mr. Stobaugh earlier said that uh, soybean is the preferred feedstock for biodiesel, and all things being equal, that is absolutely true. Soybean uh, biodiesel has lots of characteristics that make it superior to other feedstocks. Answering your question, with soybeans, we don't see a big difference uh, in a B20 blend, okay, between diesel fuel and a B20. Uh, when you go to animal fats as the feedstock for biodiesel, then that cloud point of the fuel, gelling point, it goes up uh, somewhat. But you can treat a B20 blend with anti-gel additives just like you can treat a diesel with anti-gel additives. So if you do that, uh, temperature shouldn't be a big problem. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. We go by, and that's, I thank you for asking that question. Uh, we do have some materials, we leave them. Uh, there's uh, some extension publications, some uh, information from the uh, National Biodiesel Board, and how do we choose where to go. Uh, we go, we contact schools and ask to come out, but a lot of places we go are by invitation. So if you have teachers, science teachers, agriculture teachers, math teachers even, that you're familiar with, that uh, would be interested in this, please encourage them to get in contact with us. Uh, my card's out here on the table. Pick one up. Uh, tell them to call us. We'll be happy to come and uh, do a two-day program for them or whatever fits into their schedule. We'd love to do that.